one championship debuted in the United States tonight, I would definitely have to say it's an 8 out of 10 card. Man, that was fun. That was one of the funnest cards in recent time. Like, I don't remember this year actually watching a whole card that exciting. So many finishes, so many crazy fights. I mean, from Muay Thai to grappling to MMA, it had it all, and I actually felt pretty nice. It's a little bit different than Bellator, because Bellator, I don't know what it is, it just doesn't feel the same. Because they'll have kickboxing fights, they'll have MMA fights but one championship has a different atmosphere about it when you're watching it almost feels like pride in its prime days almost like that it's very it's very different than what you're used to seeing the ufc has a great feeling when you watch and so does one championship and i have to go and say that right now as we speak, One is the second best organization for combat sports right now. It's right after the UFC, in my opinion. And the fighters are so fun to watch. I mean, so many amazing strikers. They probably have, on average, the best strikers out of any MMA organization. Because they're taking guys straight from Muay Thai. Like, guys who have been striking for such a long time. These are the kind of strikers that you see. Now, they're not the same kind of grapplers for the most part in MMA. I would say the UFC has the best wrestlers and grapplers. But one probably has the best strikers overall, and I'm a strikers fan, and that card specifically showed a lot of great striking. So first we gotta talk about the main event, and this one honestly, if we're gonna be fair and honest, it did not follow suit. It was not exciting to watch, and especially after what we saw from Rotang and Stamp and Sebastian knocking out Soldich and the grappling match with Mikey Musa Messi, it made the main event feel even more boring than it actually was. We got spoiled with all those great fights, and Demetrius Johnson versus Adriano Moraes did not play out the way the first two fights did, and honestly, I would have to say it's Moraes' fault. What was he doing out there for, for like 90% of that fight? Hugging Demetrius and that's it? He did not adjust at all to what Demetrius was doing. DJ's game plan was very simple and it was very obvious. He was just going to attack the body. From distance, he had great angles and great footwork, but targeting the body was the main thing that he was doing. Big left kicks to the body, and for 90% of that fight being in the clinch, there were more knees landing to the body than even punches landing throughout the whole fight. And Adriano Moraes kept going into the clinch, even though he was getting beat there. He never changed anything. He hugged DJ for 24 minutes of the fight. And of course, he's such a big guy, he's going to push DJ up against the fence. DJ's going to have a hard time getting out of there, but he just kept attacking the body, and Moraes did nothing about it. It was so weird to watch. And he absolutely did start to get tired after the second round because the body shots were taking its toll that quickly, and they were fighting at altitude, so it was really playing against Moraes. But DJ was trying to fight, the promotion, everything was good. Moraes just didn't come out there to perform. He landed some good right hands in the second round, but that was it. DJ cruised into a comfortable win and still goes to show that he is one of the best fighters in the world still. And I had some people asking me, would this version of Demetrius Johnson beat the likes of Brennan Moreno and the other great flyweights or even bantamweights of the world? I think he's outgunned in the bantamweight division for the most part, but I could see him beating like Brennan Moreno and Kai Kawa France and Davidson Figueredo. He's so well-rounded, his fight IQ is so high. It's difficult for anybody to fight him, even for as old as he is right now. So, great win for Demetrius, but the fight in general didn't play out the way the co-main event did, where Raw Tang, in a Muay Thai fight, knocked out Edgar Tabarez in the second round. This guy is a superstar, man. I mean, they need to bring him around the world. The crowd was going crazier for him than anybody else, and he's never fought in the United States before. It was his first time in America, and they were going insane for the guy. Even more than Demetrius, who's from America. He has some kind of it factor about him. There's something about him that makes people gravitate themselves to him. He's a guy with a humble background, came from nothing, and now is making a lot of money, super successful, and famous. He's only going to get more from life, because he's 25 years old. This guy's 25. He does look a bit older, I'm not going to lie. It's all the fights, man. When you take so many fights, that ages you and this guy has over 300 professional fights but he has so much more left of him muay thai fighters are fighting older these days just like all combat sports athletes so we can be seeing rod tang still competing even as far as sanchai is right now who's like what in his 40s imagine rod tang's star power and where he could be in his career 10 years from now if he keeps going like this if he keeps putting on amazing performances, highlight reels, and they promote him around the world, this guy could be an absolute global star. And I would love to see a Muay Thai fighter actually get there. Because Muay Thai and kickboxing, for some reason, just doesn't get the attraction of the fans as much. And it always feels like that, but I think Rod Tang is a different story. I could see something different about this guy. I can actually see people enjoying his fights. And honestly... The way one championship brings an MMA organization, which I would say is more mainstream than Muay Thai, and they put on Muay Thai fights as a co-main event, that's actually a great model to get 
MMA fans to fall in love with Muay Thai as well. Because Muay Thai is so fun to watch. It's non-stop action on the feet. And there's always a lot of knockouts, especially when you have a guy like Rod Tang on the card. And he had an amazing knockout win with that elbow. Stepping in, very short, countering Edgar Tabarez as spinning back elbow counter. As he was trying to catch Rod Tang after getting his teep caught. And then punched to the body, right? He was countering that with a spinning back elbow. But then Rod Tang countered that with an elbow. Craziness, man. It just showed that a guy who studied him for years did not go far enough in order to defeat him. And then what about another young guy, Mikey Musumesi, defeated Osama Almarwa by a rear naked choke, man. So, Mikey's 26 years old, and he's the most seamless guy in the world. If you walked past him, you would think he's just some nerd. Like, there's no way this guy's dangerous, right? Little does anybody know, this guy could strangle up 99% of people on the planet. And do what I love about him? He's so wholesome. He's such a nice guy. He's such a student of the game. He is like a super nerd. And for people that don't know, he got his black belt under Gilbert Burns. That's how serious this guy is in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 18 years old, he got his black belt. From Dorinho of all people. Come on, man. This guy is a problem. Very fun to watch. His scrambling's insane. Then we had Stamp Fairtex, who is one of my favorite fighters in combat sports. I don't talk about her too much because I haven't talked about Muay Thai. She bounces back and forth between Muay Thai and MMA very often. Right? She had a Muay Thai fight in January and made me think, wait, is she going to just keep going Muay Thai? But she had a lot of MMA fights before that, so I was very confused on what her career direction was. Because she did lose to Angela Lee after she won the tournament. But man, she is insane. One of the best body kicks of the year. Round outs to the body. Caught with the foot. Right into the solar plexus. And that was it. There was a knee that landed toward the chest before that. And that set up the kick afterward. Just amazing Muay Thai skill from Stamp. Who's also 25 years old. She doesn't have as many fights as Rod Tang. She has a total of 86 professional kickboxing fights. And then 12 MMA fights. But she put on a show, man. This is another fighter that can really get somewhere if promoted correctly. She reminds me of the Pride days when fighters used to come out with a, a themed entrance, like when Anderson Silva came out like Michael Jackson and stuff like that. She comes out all the time with some kind of dancing performance to get the crowd going. And then she fights like an absolute menace in the ring and cage. Now, she definitely has to get her grappling in order because that was the big difference when she fought Angela Lee, who was obviously going to try to take the fight to the ground. But she did show a great ability in that fight against Elise Anderson, who is trained by Pat Berry and trains with Rose Namajunas, to be able to get the back off a caught kick. So she threw a body kick. Anderson grabbed it, and then in a blink of an eye, Stamp rotated around and backpacked her. It was crazy to see that. Very impressed with the progression of Stamp right now. And I would love to see her get somewhere, man, because if she can get a big win streak going or something like that and then promote it along Rod Tang, who are friends together, we can get something special going here with these two fighters. But man, that body kick was crazy. And then uh, Roberto Soldic got knocked out. This was completely unexpected. A huge upset. For people that don't know who Roberto Soldic is, they call him Robocop. So it's like a playoff of Crow Cop because they both fought out of Croatia. And Soldic is an absolute marauder in there, man. He has so much power. He goes for the knockout every single time. He was on a seven-fight win streak. Knocked out Mamed Halidov. Knocked out Dreykus Duplessis. Had a very close fight before with Yaroslav Amasov. But lost a split decision. And now he just got knocked out by Sebastian Kadistan. It was one of those things. He was winning the fight. He was winning the first round. And then in the second round, he threw a bolo uppercut from the southpaw stance. Left bolo uppercut while moving backwards. Throwing bolo uppercuts like that as you're moving away from the opponent has always been very disastrous for the guy throwing it. It's completely defenseless and you're taking off power from your punch. There's so many better substitutes than doing that. Well, he threw it, big wind up on the uppercut, dropped his right hand, and got clipped by a step and elbow from Sebastian. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end. Sebastian just put it on him, caught him with a straight that dropped him, and then a left hook that put him down for good. Crazy win for Sebastian, knocking out a guy who hasn't lost in five years. Right, the last guy that beat Roberto Soldic was Dreykus Duplessis, but then Soldic avenged it with knocking him out cold. Not a lot of guys are able to get ahead of Soldic in his career, man. He's had some bad luck recently, where his debut at one was a no contest in the first round because he got low blowed. And now, he got clipped because of a mistake. That's all it takes, man. One elbow, and the fight can change completely. And I really wonder, is he going to go back down to the welterweight division? He was in the welterweight division for such a long time. For pretty much his whole career. But yeah, man, crazy event. So many good fights. If you guys haven't watched it, I 100% recommend it.
it's on Amazon Prime, so you can go back and rewatch. I think a lot of people have Amazon Prime, so if you have it, you can watch it. The whole main car was absolutely crazy, man. So exciting. 